You just downloaded Blender, you're super excited to use it, you're gonna make the coolest 3D models ever, but... The, <laughs> what is Blender? The second you open it up, there's just a million different things you can do. It's scripting? Compositing? I mean, there's so much you can do with Blender, like, what is it exactly? Let me show you. So Blender is often overcomplicated. I mean, really, all 3D software is overcomplicated, especially when people explain it, because there's just so much to unpack, like there's so many features, so many things to delve into, and it wasn't until I took an advanced calculus class in real life that I realized even the most complicated things can be explained in really simple terms as long as you use the right words. So I'm gonna add a cube, and then go into edit mode up here. All edit mode does is let you see the individual parts that make up a mesh. So, if I go to Vertex Select, you can see that this entire cube is just made up of vertices. Each one of those vertices is connected with an edge, and if you have three or more edges, in this case, four edges, you can see they can be connected to make an entire face. And then every 3D model is just made up of these faces. If I delete one, you can see that the inside of this is completely hollow. It's literally only the faces on the outside. So, all a 3D model is, is essentially like watertight faces. Faces that are perfectly connected together with no gaps or holes to make something that looks pretty cool. So that seems simple enough, like a 3D model is just vertices, and then our job is to move those vertices around until we get, I don't know what you're trying to make, like a transformer or like a gun, a car, or something like that. So if the idea of 3D modeling is so simple, then why is it so difficult? Honestly, it's just because of the software. Blender is just extremely complicated because there's so many different tools in it. Like, yeah, let's see, I add a cube, uh, I can pick from all these modifiers to add to the cube, I can add a, a particle system to it, I can add physics to it, I can add a material to it, I can add a texture to it, I have three Wait, no, four different properties just for rendering settings. I have the world settings here, I don't even know what this one does. Then the cube properties here, a ton of different tabs up here. I mean, Blender is just so intimidating the first time you open it, because it's like, okay, if you want to make a, a full-length Pixar movie, here's every single tool that you're going to need for that. The nice thing about it, though, is every single tool, like, Literally every single tool in Blender can be categorized into two different spots. One of them is tools that manipulate the vertices of a mesh. These are tools that, you know, like, move vertices, add vertices, change the place of them, yada yada. They all fit into one category. Another group is going to be tools that change the appearance of the overall mesh, like lighting, coloring, painting, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So with this mindset, Blender is a lot easier. You just have to understand what each tool does and where you can find each tool. If I go back into edit mode, all these tools on the left are for uh, manipulating vertices, like uh, the loop cut, for example, just adds more vertices to your mesh. Uh, if I click and drag, it goes off-center if you want it like a really specific spot. Uh, the knife tool lets you add uh, vertices in a very specific pattern if you want like a distinct shape that you're trying to make. Uh, the bevel, for example, just turns an edge into uh, a face. The bevel, for example, just turns edges into faces like this. Uh, we got extrude as well, that just brings faces out. Then there's obviously like scaling, rotation, and moving. So you can see these are like the main tools that most modelers use. Like these are the most common ones and they're not that complicated. You basically just have tools that can cut up edges to make really specific patterns, tools that can bring faces out, tools that can turn edges into faces just like this, and a few tools to like inset faces and stuff like that. But none of these are too complicated. They're all very basic, but it's just hard to know exactly when to apply them. Then the other like giant stack of vertice manipulation tools is gonna be the modifiers tab over here. Oh my god, this is intimidating. Like if this was my first time using Blender, I would just close the project, uninstall Blender, and freaking throw my computer out the window. There's so much to unpack here. I mean, I've been using Blender for like three years, and I only know about maybe 15 or 20 of these, because I've only ever needed a couple of them. A modifier is just an automatic operation that affects the geometry of your mesh. For example, I'd say the most common one is the subdivision surface modifier. This one just uh, subdivides all the faces on your mesh, like this. 
all, all of a sudden it looks more spherical because uh, the, the faces have like bends in them and there's just a lot more faces than there was before. If I just increase the subdivision, you can see it just gets rounder and rounder. Then there's like the mirror modifier that just mirrors the cube to the other side of the viewport if you're trying to make like symmetry and stuff like that. A good chunk of these are pretty self-explanatory, but some of them just have weird names. So I'd look up tutorials on them or just experiment with them. I mean, kind of like the uh, editing stuff over here, like all of them are simple. Like I did watch a video a while ago that explained every single one of these and they're all simple. Like they can all be boiled down to a very simple explanation, but some of them are just so obscure that it's kind of hard to figure out what they do, even if you're like experimenting with them. You guys want to hear a surprise? What I just showed you is more than half of the modeling tools that you'll use in Blender. Modifiers and the edit mode features are, I mean, that's almost everything that you need to model whatever you want. There's also sculpting as well, if you want to get like super detailed. Uh, yeah, subdivide this cube a lot because it's going to make some cleaner sculpts. But yeah, you can like brush on the mesh to extrude those vertices. You can see if I go back into edit mode, like it's actually manipulating the geometry. I'm not just like painting something on there. Uh, there's different brushes to choose from if you want like different patterns on the mesh. Let's see, that one's kind of boring. Uh, clay strips is cool. Uh, this one just makes like sort of flat mountainy stuff. I don't use sculpting very often because as you can see, I mean, 200,000 tries down there, it's going to be a really laggy mesh because there's just so many faces for the software to process. So because of that, you can't really use meshes like this outside of Blender, because if you're like putting it in a game engine or like a 3D printer, it's just so taxing on the software. But hey, you can make some sick stuff with sculpts anyway, so go for it. Yeah, between sculpting, modifiers, and edit mode tools, I can't think of any other modeling stuff. Like, that's really all of it. Besides that, we have these three tabs right here, maybe four, I, I don't remember exactly, I mean give or take a couple of them. These are all render settings. So if I go into rendered mode up here, and I don't know, let's see, uh, we gotta add a camera, I always forget what it is, uh, camera, there we go. Check this magic out, uh, find a good spot in the viewport, press control, alt, and numpad zero, and the camera just flies to that spot, it's super cool. Then you can like move the cube around, and you, you can see if I render the image up here, the camera renders what we had in our viewport, and it obviously looks pretty ugly because we have no lighting, that's why lighting is important. Uh, fun hack for Blender if you just want some basic lighting, uh, shift A, Let's see, light, add a sun, uh, max out the angle, and max out the strength. And there you go. You'll get even lighting from all sides. Well, almost all sides. And it looks pretty clean. And if we just render that, you can see, like, eh, you got a decent looking cube there. Another cool thing I like to do is if you go into this tab here, what is that? Render properties, go down to film, and hit transparent. Oh, that's kind of trippy. Yeah, and you render that image, uh, there's no background there. So if you put this into like Photoshop or like some kind of editing software, only the cube is going to show up, nothing else in the background. Then obviously if you, if you have like more meshes and stuff, they'll show up as well, but just no background. It's kind of cool. If you press shift A as well and go down to this light tab, you've got like point lights, the sun, which we just added, spotlights and area lights. Uh, they're all just different ways of adding light to your mesh. Like, let's see, if I delete the sun to make this a little more obvious, you can see there's a little bit of light coming from this guy. Then then I can go into the light settings as well, make it like really bright by increasing the power. And uh, yeah, you can just like fiddle with the lighting for that. Then obviously you can change the color as well, just up here, or let's go pink light. Sure, why not? That's kind of cool. Then uh, if I go back into material preview mode, uh, this is sort of like the uh, halfway point between just a solid view and the rendered view. This is just like, you know, a little preview of what everything's gonna look like without lighting. Without lighting is important, because as you can see, there's like no more pink light on this cube. If I go back into rendered view, it's still there. But uh, yeah, lighting does not show up in material preview mode. What you're seeing is just like blenders, I don't know, default lighting to show you what you've got. If you want a basic color on your mesh, go to the material tab, hit new. We just created a new material. There's a ton of different settings down here here. There's, I mean, there's a ton of different settings for materials, but if you just change the base color, you'll get something nice and simple. I don't know, maybe turn the, uh, what we got, metallic up, sure. Turn the roughness all the way down, that makes it super glossy and stuff. Go back into render view, we got like some glossy looking cube, it's pretty cool. And then, I don't know, just press shift D to duplicate the light, bring it over here a couple times. Oh, we got some nice little reflections in there, yes sir. I want to render one of those reflections, so I'm going to move my camera up here, press control, alt, and numpad Z zero and render that image. And uh, oh, that's kind of cool, yeah. So that's basically the visual aspect of Blender. It's just a ton of different tools that are meant to make your render look as good as possible. The uh, compositing tab up here, 
is a hundred percent for rendering. After you've done a render, you basically chuck it in here and it's just Photoshop. Then there's also tools for like animation as well, if you want to just, well, obviously make an animation, but that's just a whole different skill set to unpack. Basically, you have your object, uh, I insert a keyframe for location, rotation, and scale, move the object somewhere else, move the timeline forward, oh, excuse me, move the timeline forward, then move your object, I, location, rotation, scale, timeline, Oh, whoops, timeline comes forward, uh, move it, rotate it, scale it, I, location, rotation, scale. If I move it back, you can see Blender can just track all the movement we've done on our cube, including like the scaling and the rotating. Uh, that's the basis for animation, but obviously it gets incredibly complicated when you've got like multiple bones on a character to animate or like multiple things going on at once, or if you wanted to like animate the values on a light. It's pretty easy to see how this software can get complicated, because really the basis of Blender is all of the tools are incredibly simple, but there's just so many of them that it looks more complicated than it actually is. Hopefully this helped a little bit with your understanding of Blender, and uh, yeah, go subscribe, uh, I, I guess.